Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I think uh, I'm happy to be part of this, uh, also for my department as uh, part of this. So uh, I changed my topic a little bit because uh, I really wanted to be more specific with regards to what is happening within uh, uh, the chemical sector and then try to see how we can actually uh, strengthen our contribution as DST, as government departments, and then uh, try to see what more can we do from what we are actually doing at this stage. And then uh, I will try to uh, start uh, where uh, actually my uh, area of uh, focus. So I will start to uh, give you the assignment development goals, uh, and then from there follow up with regards to what my DDG said to a parliamentary monetary group. And then from there, I zoom into the area where I'm focusing on. Uh, that's uh, the chemical sector. And from there, we can see what more can we do as government, as a research institution to make sure that somehow we actually uh, make a strengthen our contribution to make sure that sustainable Goals are actually reached. So uh, that's the science development goals that we have, but not all, all of them are actually science focused. And then from there, let me promise me say not all of them are actually chemistry focused. But then I will have my selection of some of them where uh, I think we can play a role as a, a chemistry or the chemical sector. So uh, we have got five pillars which are within the sidelink development goals. The first one is actual prosperity, where we will look at the affordable and green energy. Decent work, that's what we're looking at. In that innovation infrastructure, that's what our department shall focus on. And then uh, reduce inequality and also suburban city and communities. <coughs> then we look at the planet Earth. We can see what more can we do to sustain our planet Earth. And then look at also our partnership what partnership can we do so we make sure that we shall end up reaching sustainable goals? And then uh, from there, yes, we need, need peace. And then from there, we look at the uh, people. What can we do with people? How can we reduce hunger? How can we provide good health? And also, how can we provide quality education? And then, say, as, as, as I told you, that somehow I was start to move what's happened within a uh, government from the presentation that was given on the 31st of October, October by my DDG. He said, yes, for us to actually support sustainable development goals, we can look at the uh, four ways. The first one is generating package uh, for data monitoring, planning, checking, progress, and helping stakeholders and to make informed decisions. Then the second one say allow the generation of knowledge that we do uh, through a variety of science councils that we support, and then also look at our policy planning and delivery. Then the third one is someone went to we look at how do we localize technology through various kind of uh, ways, and then from there we say how do we demonstrate that actually the technology that we have is actually effective. Those are the areas that uh, our DDG actually end up uh, presenting and say. That's the way to go with regards to actually looking at the contribution of science. And then now coming up, we'll try to see what actually has been happening within the science space. And there we realized the uh, science council that actually played a role seriously is actually uh, the NRF, National Research Foundation, where we realized if we go out there, we realized Although some of the chairs started a little bit earlier, but when we come in, we realize somehow their contribution can be linked to very, very well to sustainable development goals. So, and then from there, and then uh, another one which we can look at, say, audition for the says, as they say, recommend could create research programs in addition to actually to strengthen uh, uh, system development goals because uh, the two are not actually mutually exclusive. 
And then, uh, well, with regards to what's happened within our, in NRF, I think I'll take you through the different parts of chess and also centers of excellence that were created. Some of them before, some of them in uh, relating system development goes after they've been introduced. So the first one that we can look at is uh, number six, where a uh, chair was actually, was uh, two chairs were int in introduced with regards to contribution to water research. And then where the development of water is actually playing a role and is actually part of it. And then uh, the second one is the one where it's linked with uh, uh, another department, the DTI, where uh, we established centers of, of excellence in South African Institute of Aquatic Biodiversity. And also, they also established the National Cleanup Production Center at the CSR, which at this stage is actually busy trying to create uh, networks in South Africa. I think uh, the workshop that I attended with them where they actually invited Yale University to South Africa, even more so the father of uh, this green chemistry. Uh, we had a chat with him almost uh, earlier uh, last year, and the uh, things are ongoing and the networks are being strengthened with regards to green chemistry. And then here is uh, another area where 10 chairs were established with regard to climate change. And so far, DST is playing a serious role there with South African Environment Observation Network. So that's another area where we're playing a role. Another one where you look at life within our waters, seven chairs also have been established in this regard, and we are, we, which are actually helping a lot with regards to addressing uh, goal 14. And then with regards to 15, uh, so uh, we also have got a uh, uh, four chairs also as well, and also centers of uh, excellence were established. Uh, and then let's try to look at this. Number 17, yes, that's, this one has to do with partnership. That's the role that they've done, and we'll make sure that we actually tap into international funding through our, one of, of our program at uh, DST, and then some, some, somehow that has been very much valuable. We have got a... Uh, uh, international uh, funding that came to, to DST through this establishment of this particular chess. So now let us try to see. This is my selection of uh, where the chemical sector can play a role. We can differ here and there because there are some documents that I went through that actually had a different selection. But somehow I think uh, we can look at how my selection come from. Let us try to see now the specific nature of uh, a chemical industry. Those are the kind of uh, areas where if you wake up in our daily lives, I think as you're sitting here with me, some of you have actually in one form or other interacted with chemistry. So you use soap and all sorts of things. You also try to use uh, clean water, but then on top of that, something else that chemistry is actually doing. Can you see is actually contribution to the mess? that is around us. So then, how do we then end up handling the good part of chemistry and also the mess that is being created by chemistry, whereby look at the summer products that are produced are actually not uh, bio biodegradable. And then from that, I'm saying, uh, within government, we are trying to look at two approaches. The first one is actually remediation whereby uh, the environment, environmental first taking a lead with regards to banning uh, toxic and unhappy and analytic uh, chemicals. Developing the database of polar and hazard chemicals in South Africa and also providing uh, regulations that can actually make sure that we have control of what is up coming to our shores and also what we are producing as a country. Then the other part which you say can we do something which is good and produce better chemicals for our future? That kind of, uh, well, that's where you come up and say, how do you develop new environmentally friendly chemical products? And then we say, okay, now 
with regards to chemicals out there that are toxic hazardous, how do we then end up providing alternatives? And then from there, you can also come and say, how do we end up uh, producing businesses that produce and formulate new environment-friendly chemicals? I think that's where we can actually look at. And then, then we'll come up with the area. Yes, here, Anna, we're sitting with a lot of organic waste. With this organic waste, we can end up converting it to a chemical feedstock uh, from re renewable materials. So that's the area of focus that we can actually convert our self and also the DGI. So now let us try to see now what is actually happening within DIA. DIA end up establishing what we call a, a MS, MCPP, a, a MCCM, so sorry, Multistakeholder Committee on Chemicals Management, where uh, they are actually a part of a Malaysia Environmental Agreements. And then within that one, they end up where discussed issues like a person organic pollutants also uh, look at uh, how can we uh, eliminate mercury also how can we take a lead from our paint also how can we uh, come up and uh, eliminate, eliminate this uh, chlorofluorocarbons which are actually contribution to ozone uh, depletion and uh, destruction and then also then come up to say, how do we then control mal malaria? And participating in the department in this area is actually Department of Health, DALF, and also DEA. And also then with regards to coordinating chemicals management. I think for that, uh, I don't know whether my case will also come with us. These are kind of a multilateral agreements that uh, DEA is actually engage in. The first one is the Basel Convention. You can see the day in which it started and then you can see what is actually happening within that area and then uh, then uh, you can see uh, the Rotterdam Convention as well, even the day in which it was started and what is happening in that uh, within that space as well. Excuse me. And then uh, from there you can see the Stockholm Convention as well and you can see what is happening within that area. Then uh, from here, we can also then try to see within malaria control, what is happening? Are we in a position to actually end up el el eliminating malaria in uh, KwaZulu Natal and so also in Limpopo? So a strategy was put in place where uh, one is looking at the uh, components of uh, integrated vector uh, management, where you look at industrial resource spraying, you look at level source management you look at uh, personal production. And within uh, the different areas, that's how indoor uh, research spraying is actually done. And then that's how you end up selecting the choice of and how you uh, how prefer policy and how you end up, end up uh, uh, come up with uh, doing with your uh, spraying activities. And also how do you, uh, which chemical do you actually end up using? which is DDT, which is also somehow poisonous in the long run, which I think we are trying to get rid of it. But at this stage, we cannot, because malaria is actually a hassle and we haven't find a solution yet. And then with regards to elevated uh, source uh, management, we look at how can we modify our habitat, how can we mal manipulate the environment where they actually they are found, and how can we barricade and also how to come up with a bilateral control. With regard to bilateral control, I think uh, as I go along, I'll come up with a solution of how that can be done and the initiative that has been taken based on technology. And the personal protection in that area, you can see the chemicals that they actually used, three of them for that matter. And then now look at the, the nets that are used, look at the clothing, protective one, we look at azure sprays, we can look at the uh, coils and vaporizers, we look at the uh, house screening and all proofing, and also look at the uh, prevent uh, breeding in and around the, uh, the dwellings. So uh, and then uh, now come up with the area of how do we end up uh, engaging in this uh, 
industrial uh, development. As I mentioned earlier, we are busy with regards to developing uh, green chemistry. We are actually engaged in uh, doing workshops, although we haven't come up strong with that regards, but I think uh, we are actually part of it and we're actually going there and the NCPC is actually assisting us in that environment. And then with regard to biological, biological strategy, we do have DST, and then the area of focus which are looking at this one is uh, biocatalysis. And what we don't have at this stage is an enzyme bank where we need to in introduce for our local researchers. And then the other one which we look at uh, the organic waste application for a, a supply of a chemical free stocks. So this one, uh, one uh, pilot plant is uh, there at uh, CSR in Dubai, it was actually launched last year, and things are ongoing. Another one is part of uh, DST, not in my program, but other programs within DST, is the one which we call, uh, for mosquitoes, what we call the sterile insect technique, whereby uh, male mosquitoes actually uh, irradiated. And then from there, you end up with a situation where those uh, mosquitoes are released into the environment. When release them into the environment, they actually end up populating the environment and mix with the uh, females, but uh, not do anything. They end up actually shielding the active mosquitoes. I think probably it's a technique that we can also ask the Department of Health to use for us as well. <laughs> and then we can <laughs> see whether we say every man shall end up with two kids. Thereafter, we end up applying this technique. Probably it can work you know, <laughs> for our section. So this good work is ongoing so far. Uh, it started being uh, used, uh, done by DST. I think uh, a sterile mosquitoes were released in uh, UKZ and also in Limpopo. So we don't have the outcome yet, but I think in this regard are actually going. So uh, in conclusion, I'll say yes. Uh, what the DDG, DDG said is actually very vital. That's how science can actually contribute to effective uh, to SDG goals. And then from there, idea initiative through uncoordinated, although uncoordinated, I think uh, if we can strengthen our activities, focus to uh, this uh, human capital within NRF, we can actually do more. This kind of uh, activity is very much uh, in place. I actually appreciate I'm part of it, but uh, I think we can do more as well with regards to looking at the focus of our, of our R&D with regards to uh, alternatives, which we haven't done yet. I think it's an area that we can do. And then with regards to biotechnology, it's at the early stage, but uh, some effect that green chemistry can actually be valuable with regards to the new uh, chemicals on our shores, or probably globally. We can also try to look at uh, what people have done already globally. And then there's uh, actually uh, an, uh, what we call a World Business Council on Social Development. They came up with a strategy which is very much uh, uh, valuable, what that actually we can actually learn from it. And then uh, we can say yes, with green chemistry, which is sustainable, we can end up uh, contributing to sustainable development goals. And then, yes, that's uh, uh, the strategy that we put together by World Business Council on science development. They look at sustainable development goal roadmap. Also, another chemical study was in UK. They come up with uh, how do we end up taking out uh, the global warming carbon dioxide. And from there, they put together what you called decarbonization strategy, whereby they're taking carbon dioxide and converting it to, to valuable use and making a variety of uh, chemicals, one of them being ethanol. Ethanol can actually be used as energy, or alternatively, you can actually end up dehydrating it, whereby you end up now producing polymers. So that's how you can end up uh, transforming the chemical sector and make it more valuable. 
unlike destroying the environment as we have done in the past, I think we can end up uh, eliminating the hazard effect that chemistry has done over years. Even more so, as we are talking, we know that somehow global woman contribution is actually through a fossil fuel burning, which today you cannot run away from it. I think as time goes on, probably we shall find a solution of actually eliminating that kind of. So now with us, I will come with the following recommendation. I'll say, let's ask consultable and uh, establish a chemical sector around the roadmap, as others global has done already, we have seen that. And also support the innovation platform within remediation initiative that is managed by the DIA. This regard, cheaper and more alternative hazard chemicals may be found. And then South Africa should establish Enzyme Bank, which uh, biochemists and also biotechnologists can actually use. And then from there, we can end up with relevant enzymes in our country for molecular transformation. I think that's very possible. I attended some lectures which are uh, given some, uh, by some lecturers where you see that, yeah, they use actually enzymes to actually come up with the active pharmaceutical ingredient. It was so actually very much valuable. And I noticed, I don't know whether you will come here, one of the professor, uh, John Bradley, I think, was there with me where we actually see that kind of a presentation. And can also uh, uh, expand our chemical sector networks and establish partnership uh, uh, for industrial uh, development. I think what is happening within uh, this uh, NCPC is very much valuable. Let us expand that kind of activity. And then from there, let's encourage education institutions to actually end up incorporate green chemistry in their curriculum. And uh, secondly, they also try to do uh, green chemistry. In that, in that part, we can become a uh, the friendly sector, the chemical sector. Thank you.